understand when people, when children beat up other people and hurt other people like a bully. That's part of their conditioning, their associated memory. The system they live with that, which doesn't correct that. Schools do not teach you much. They're mostly concerned with propaganda. Most schools don't teach you how to live, find meaning in your own life, how to disagree without getting angry. That's what's needed. And as long as the world goes on this way, you're going to have cycles of war, depression, economic drop, because you believe in right, wrong, good, and bad. What is really needed is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources for the benefit of everyone. Now, the only way you can do that is through technology. Everything that you have, your lights, your air conditioning, your automobile, your airplanes, all technology. Politicians can't give you that. Politicians don't know what to do. They make laws. Now, that's no way to change. Say no to drugs. Well, that's not going to stop a person from selling drugs as long as there's money in it. But if you do away with the money system and build access centers where anyone can have access to the necessities of life without filling out a million forms or appealing to Fresco, it's all available to everyone. Everything on earth is made by people that worked hard to achieve that. So a young man in Princeton got up and he said, I don't like your system at all. I said, I can't do anything with what you're saying. What is it that you don't like? He said, well, you want to give people things to nothing. I said, were you born in America? He said, yes. You got the airplane, the telephone, the radio, airplanes, ships, all for nothing. You didn't have anything to do with that, I'm sure. What? So, I said, does it hurt you? He said, no, but I don't like the idea of people getting things for nothing. So I said, are you paying your way through Princeton? He said, no, my dad did. <laughs> Is that hard you? Does that hurt you? He said, I still don't believe people want to get anything for nothing. So I said, okay, okay. Your dad is wealthy, as I understand it. He said, yes. When he dies, you want his money to go to the heart fund and the cancer fund, not to you, because you don't believe anybody ought to get anything for nothing. He said, just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> when I say people hardly know what they're talking about, because they're not brought up to be sane. They're brought up to fit in with the establishment. So it's very hard to ask people, what do you vote for? I believe in democracy. There's never been a democracy anywhere in the world. There can't be a democracy if people have different income. If you get minimum wage and your kid gets sick, you can't take him to a doctor if you can't afford it. So he buys a used car. The used car breaks down more than a new car, and he's up to debt. I mean, uh, he has to take his kid to a clinic, lose a day's pay, and he's on minimum wage to start with. So what, how do you look at that? How can you have a democracy if mothers are not educated on how to feed their kids nutritional food? Today, they pump chickens to grow faster, put ingredients in food to color it to make it look better and add artificial flavoring in many instances. And so you don't get the best food. In the future, the medics would be concerned with what, and the nutritional experts would be concerned about the food people get. Now, a lot of you have never heard of this book, A Hundred Million Guinea Pigs. Did anyone ever hear of it? Okay. In America, it was a bestseller. It attacked the drug industries and showed you why the drug industry didn't use cell reduce to lower blood pressure because there's no money in it. So they make these little pills, they get two or three bucks for it. This book exposed the drug industry. And the American public it was the best seller. So we got to have a pure food and drug administration. People that want monitor that and watch over you. So they did build that, they got that. But today it's managed by the drug industry. And the people that run it used to work for the drug industry. So you see, everything becomes corrupt in a monetary system. I'm sorry about that. So when I say to you, go to your big department stores or your food stores, you'll see lots of stuff. We are now capable of producing an abundance. During the war, we gave soldiers airplanes that cost, uh, today anyway, 
are nearly a billion dollars apiece. How come we don't do that during peace? Send every kid to college at once to go. That would improve to all nations. But if you don't have the money to go to college, you become second rate. So we say in the future, everyone will be given the best opportunity so that we can bring out the best in every human being. No. And if you grade children, you got a C, you got a D, you make jealousy and envy. People say to me, <coughs> excuse me, I know two people from the same environment. One turned out to be a priest, the other a gangster. If environment is everything, how do you get those differences? You get those differences by playing with the youngest child, four years old, while the seven-year-old says, you can't play with one kid, this is my, my youngest kid. You must take the older kid, put him on your lap, and the younger kid say, this is your baby brother. Never say to a girl, why can't you be like your sister? She puts everything in her place, you leave everything all over the place, I have to pick up after you, and the sister becomes jealous. That's where jealousy comes from. It comes from poor manipulation of the variables. In human behavior, if you give one child or treat one child as your favorite, you hurt the other children. If you grade children in school, you hurt the other kids. I got an A, what did you get? F, failure, you know. So people have different attitudes. So people that steal, all of us, by the way, are prostitutes in this system. If you sing and you sell toothpaste, you're a prostitute. If you get up and you say, I got just a house you're looking for, you're a prostitute for the establishment. So there's no good or bad people now. We're perfect reflections of the culture we live in. Again, I'm sorry about that. So if you begin to think outside the box, here's what that means. I was told by a Catholic priest who told me there are things beyond the physical. That is, you're trying to make the world a better place, but there are spiritual aspects. And what do you mean by spiritual? You mean you have no locks on your door, and you bring everyone in your home, and you feed the hungry? Oh, no! So the word spiritual, if not defined by what you mean by it, a truly spiritual person carries out the teachings of religion or the point of viewpoint they can carry. Now, Jesus never wrote anything. He taught to people. And people said, I think this is what he meant. Oh, he meant that. So he got all these different things. And then God, let's take God for example, the old guy sitting up in the clouds and knows everything. He's omnipotent. You don't have to tell him anything. He made every bug, every tree, every galaxy. And then Jesus proceeds to insult him. Here's where he insulted him. Just before they crucified Christ, he looked up and says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And God said, gee, I didn't know that. <laughs> How can you pray to a God? How can you talk to God? He can't even talk to Einstein, those people. And they're always talking to God. They think through the ego problems that they're specially selected. The Jews are God's chosen people. The Germans are the master race. You know, all these little egocentric people think that they're put here to lead the world into a better direction. I may get shot, like Martin Luther King. He tries to do something, boom, he gets shot. Now, the people that don't get shot, as a rule, are guys like Hitler. Why don't they get shot? They have a lot of guards around, and they condition everybody in the environment to strictly Nazis. So, the Nazi point of view was to protect the establishment. All money systems, as they begin to collapse and change, they move towards fascism, always. It's part of the history of civilization to move in that direction. The wealthy people try to protect what they have. The people are told that that country is a bad country. They hate America. In a British newspaper called Telegraph, the CIA or the Pentagon released information which says U.S. intends to bomb seven countries. Nuclear. Preemptive strike. In the old days, that meant sneak attack. Preemptive strike is a sneak attack. And they named the seven countries, North Korea, China, Russia, 